What's up guys, I'm Josh Mosman and welcome to This Week in MXA, episode number 132, presented by O'Neill Racing. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode. The Red Bud National is in the books, also the first round of the World Supercross Series is in the books and we're gonna talk both of them in this video. Jet Lawrence, 10 and 0 in the 450 class, but finally the streak has been broken in the 250 class to where Hayden Dagan was able to get his first overall win. Unfortunately, it did come at the expense of Hunter Lawrence crashing out of the second moto in a first turn crash. Yes, first turn crashes kind of seem to be the theme of this year's Outdoor Nationals and uh, unfortunate to see both Jet Reynolds and Hunter Lawrence go down in that first 250 moto. Jet got up and finished 20th, Hunter walked off the track. Luckily, Hunter will be okay and he's uh, banged up and sore, but he's ready to go for Southwick this weekend. So that's good news for the 250 championship as it did look a little bit iffy there with him walking off the track. But we got to talk about Jet Lawrence. This guy is undefeated in the 450 class. He makes it look easy out there on the track. We have some quotes from the post-race press conference with Jet talking, and you gotta respect Jet Lawrence. He always builds up his competitors rather than tearing down for the most part in the press conferences. He does a good job of uh, talking about how great a riders they are, how tough competition they are. Even though when he's on the track, he makes it look so easy. So uh, Jet Lawrence, he talked one about his riding style, but he also talked about lappers on the track. Uh, when he talked about lappers, he said, when they see the blue flags, it's almost like they start doing hot laps or something. I don't know if they need to start throwing blue flags at them. He went on to say that there's those guys, there's a few guys that have no awareness around them and they don't know that there's another race out there besides theirs. He went on to say, I almost feel like there should be a rule where at some point in time, if you're so many seconds down and being lapped and almost being lapped again, at that point you should get pulled off because it's dangerous if you're going too slow. So that was a pretty hot take coming from Jet Lawrence about lappers but it is an interesting topic what do you guys think let us know in the comments if you think that should be uh, implemented you know you see black flags in car racing when lap riders are getting in the way of lead lap uh, the lead riders or drivers um, so maybe black flag needs to come into the outdoors let us know in the comments what you think about that jet also talked about something that i want to highlight finding his pace this is something that jet talks about a lot and we have to analyze it because he's basically looks like he's trail riding out there and easily winning the 450 class pulling away from all these guys. We did an interview with Chase Sexton. You can read it on our website. And in that interview with MXA's Jim Kimball, Chase said that Jet's not even trying and that Chase needs to get a better start and be able to push him from the beginning to maybe force him into a mistake or at least get a chance at racing with him. But right now with Jet Lawrence pulling big leads early on, he's just managing the race and it's not like he's really trying too hard. He's just riding within his pace. So another quote from Jet Lawrence, he says, finding his pace. And he said that I had to make sure Sure, I hit my marks and I get my flow and try to time the bumps instead of smashing everything because obviously I'm not as big and as heavy as some of the other lads. I got to be smarter because this bike pu punches back if I push it too much. Now that's an interesting, another hot take from Jet Lawrence. The Honda CRF 450, we've talked about it in all of our videos testing that bike for the past eight, eight or nine years. It's a twitchy, challenging motorcycle to ride that we've talked about is best when you ride it at 80%. If you push the Honda 450 too hard past your limits, it will spit you off a lot quicker than a Kawasaki KX 450, Yamaha 450, and some of the other models. So that Honda is more of a finicky chassis. It's something that you really have to tame down to work with. Over the years, Honda's been working on their engine to make it more smooth and easy to ride, but that chassis is really where we always focus on with the Honda 450. I personally agree agree with Jet Lawrence. If you override it, it will punch back and it will bite back. And uh, you can see that Jet is doing a great job of managing his mistakes and managing how he rides so that he's just smooth, jumping through the ruts and bumps. Next up, congratulations to Hayden Deegan on getting the overall win with two three moto scores in the 250 class this past weekend. We all saw it coming, especially after he won the moto at Hangtown. You can see that it's coming. Hayden Deegan finally gets an overall win in his rookie season. Very, very impressive. Something I think a lot of people are surprised with, especially after it, the Anaheim Supercross Futures race where he had some mistakes, looked like he might be a little erratic and maybe 
have a learning season in the rookie year of his 450 class. But man, Hayden Deegan surprised everybody. He is uh, learning so quickly. And I think that's the biggest thing is in his mind, he's used to winning from growing up to the amateur ranks. So he wants to win. He knows he can win. And he's so humble right now in his mindset of just continuing to learn from everybody. Every interview you hear him talk about learning, learning from the other riders, the guys who have more experience. And if you're constantly doing that, watching Hunter Lawrence is sticking with his rear tire as much as you can in each moto, you pick up, uh, pick up on things so quickly. Being at the Star Racing Yamaha farm, being around those top tier riders, you learn so quickly. And I think that's what's uh, really hel helping Hayden Deegan right now. He's still so young, 17 years old. So everything he's learning, it's able to stick and he's able to implement it a lot easier than a rider like maybe Dylan Ferrandez, who's, uh, I don't know, is he almost 30 now? It's harder for him to learn stuff because he's more set in his ways. The more advanced 450 riders who've been doing this for a long time, even uh, RJ Hampshire and some of the 250 riders who've been racing for a long time, it's harder for them to pick up on new techniques because they're more set in their ways. They know what works for them and it's harder to learn. Interesting stuff, but great job to Hayden Deegan. It's fun to watch him uh, continue to progress and we'll see if he can put up a fight with Hunter Lawrence back on the track this weekend at the Southwick National. Of course, he'll put up a fight, but it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top this weekend. So looking ahead at Southwick this weekend, it's going to be an exciting one. Southwick is America's only true sand track on the AMA National Circuit. Obviously, there's lots of other sand tracks hidden away, tucked away in either local tracks or even private tracks or even just sand tracks in the hills here in California or all over the US. But this is the only sand track that we have on, on the National Circuit. And it's not even that sandy when you compare it to the tracks they have in Europe, like Lommel. Lommel, I've been there before, ultra deep, and there's no base to it. It just continues to get rougher. The holes get deeper. Southwick, it does have a base. So it, it is limited to how rough it'll get and how deep the holes will get. It's not as deep. It doesn't drag your bike down as much as a track like Lommel does, but it's still a sand track. We still have a lot of fun racing there every year at Southwick MXA's. Ezra Lewis has been riding there this past week before the Red Bud National. So I'm excited to see how he can do there this weekend. Last year though, it was Tomac on top with Sexton and Pleasanger on the podium with him. So that's good news for Chase Sexton and Aaron Pleasanger who have been running up front this year. We'll see if they can uh, take that momentum from this race last year to stick with Jet Lawrence in that 450 Moto 1 and Moto 2. That will be exciting to see. Of course, like I mentioned, Hunter Lawrence is back this weekend. So it'll be good to see if he's in full health. Obviously we know he can ride through pain as he rode through a rib injury at the first few rounds before that finally healed up. So uh, Hunter Lawrence, he's a tough guy and it's going to be hard to beat him this weekend at Southwick as he looks to get back on top of the 250 podium. As for viewing this weekend, of course the races will be live on Peacock, but the first motos will actually be live on NBC. Uh, only the first motos though. So if you want to watch Moto2, you'll have to be on the Peacock premium streaming service for Moto2s this weekend. It's going to be exciting. Looking forward to Southwick. If you're not playing motocross actions, Pro Motocross Fantasy League, you're missing out big time. This past weekend, it was Gary Smith that won the overall at Red Bud and he won the FMF prize. I'm not sure if he chose a, a muffler for his four stroke or a pipe and silencer for his two stroke, but either way, Gary Smith got the FMF prize for top points last weekend. He had Hayden Deegan, Levi Kitchen, Ty Masterpool, Freddie Noren, Garrett Marchbanks, and Dylan Schwartz on his team last weekend. So you get three 250 guys, three 450 guys, and those are the guys who had him with 93 points. This weekend for Southwick, Ride Engineering is sponsoring the Fantasy League and they are giving away a linkage arm for your 250, 450, whichever bike you have. And if he doesn't have a linkage arm for your bike, then you get a $275 gift card to go shop on rideengineering.com to check out all the performance parts that they have. So excited for this weekend at Southwick. Get your picks in, motocrossactionmag.com and sign up for the Fantasy League. If you didn't sign up and start from the beginning, you're gonna miss out on it, but we have a battle going on right now for the Pro Motocross Fantasy League overall points player that's gonna win a brand new Beta 300 two-stroke equipped with an FMF pipe and silencer. So we're giving away a dirt bike at the end of the summer. Excited for that. Stay tuned, motocrossactionmag.com.
Also, the World Supercross Series kicked off this past weekend in Birmingham, England, and it was a successful event with a, with a few hiccups, of course, as with uh, any young series starting off, they're gonna have hiccups here and there, but it was cool to see the past champions, Ken Roxon and Shane McRath, pick up where they left off. Ken Roxon got the win in the 450 class, Shane in the 250 class with some good battles. Max Anstey, the hometown hero from the UK, he got second overall with Enzo Lopes third, and in the 450 class, it was Joey Savage who got second and Vince Freeze who got third. So interesting stuff. Uh, Vince Freeze was on the gas, but who was really on the gas was Justin Hill. He actually beat Ken Roxon in the Super Pole laps. Pretty cool to see them going wide open and see how the different line choices paid out for their overall time for the Super Pole. But interesting stuff. Those are short main events, three in a row, and they don't go 250, 450. They go three 250 main events and then three 450 main events all back to back. So some exciting racing. Justin Hill was up there. He ended up getting the win in the second race after both Vince Freeze and Ken Roxon were penalized for jumping on a Red Cross flag. So a little bit of drama there, but uh, you can check out more at wsxchampionship.com or wsx.tv. That's how you can watch uh, the replay from last weekend. So good stuff. Pro Motocross up next this weekend at Southwick. Looking forward to it. We also just posted our 2023 Husqvarna FE 450 Enduro bike tested video on our YouTube and website. Check it out, motocrossactionmag.com. That thing was a lot of fun to ride. Headlight, tail light, it's got a speedometer on it. And uh, we did some whips on the national track at Glen Helen. And we also took it off road and had some fun out there as well. Check it out now. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in to This Week in MXA episode 132. See you in the next video.